coming up on Bulldog Broadcast. Bodena takes a look into traditions and how they came to be. Then Sadie tells us how New Mexico is becoming a place for big movies to be filmed. And lastly, Aaron goes over some new rules that were set for the upcoming semester. Today is Friday, January 13th, and Bulldog Broadcast starts now. Good morning, Bulldogs. We hope you had a fantastic winter break. I'm Mia Tantu Donati. And I'm Simon Miller. We're here in New Mexico's Farm and Ranch Museum where people come to learn about our history. And although things have changed since then, one thing remains the same. Our resolution to grow and develop our land. With the first show of the new year kicking off, we hope you enjoy this lively new edition of Bulldog Broadcast. for ourselves that we wish to accomplish. This tradition is thought to have started in ancient Babylonia, where it has carried on since. To learn more about this enthralling topic, we send it over to Lorena, where she takes a more in-depth look into the history of resolutions. Hey there, Bulldogs. Now we all have traditions for ringing in the new year on January 1st, whether it be setting off some fireworks or setting some new resolutions. But we were wondering how these traditions started. We spoke with Mr. Aguirre, one of the history teachers at LCHS, to find out. The tradition of New Year's uh, dates back to our earliest records of about 4,000 years ago in ancient Babylon. Uh, the ancient Babylonians would use the first new moon right after the vernal equinox, which is basically uh, a day in late March that would have the same amount of daylight and night. And they would use this day as a way to mark the beginning of the new year. Many traditions have originated around the globe, and yet we still utilize them today. Um, and then our other customs that are shared worldwide are usually watching fireworks um, right at the start of midnight or even making a New Year's resolution. Now we can also uh, date back the New Year's resolution to the ancient Babylonians where they would use this as a way to uh, kind of send a send like a, a prayer to their god or gods as a way to get a, a prosperous or happy new year. I hope you guys made some great resolutions to fulfill this year. Reporting for Bulldog Broadcast, I'm Lorena Ortiz. Thanks, Lorena. You know, I thought resolutions were just something you give up on after a while. Yeah, me too, Mia. But I guess there's just a lot of things we don't know about. Like New Mexico's growing film industry, did you know New Mexico will hire workers and give you a full tax refund? No, I didn't, but here's Mariana to tell us about all the big productions coming to our state. Hey there, Bulldogs. I'm standing outside of Milton Hall at NMSU where I interviewed Amy Lanessa and Mark Vasconcelos to get a better insight on pro-film legislation in New Mexico. New Mexico all the time because our incentives are so amazing. Um, if you hire New Mexicans to work on your film, and use a certain amount of New Mexico resources, then the state gives you a tax rebate. Um, tax incentives are really important, and all the states that have the tax incentives in place, like New Mexico, um, they're doing the most business. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's all about money. So if you can give these producers a break by giving them some money back um, when they come to your state and spend hundreds of millions of dollars sometimes, they like that. So basically the film incentive package in New Mexico uh, is currently standing at 25% for film and then 30% uh, for television show. So Bulldogs, as you can see, there's a lot of benefits of filming in New Mexico. For Bulldog Broadcast, I'm Sadie Molina. Thanks, Mariana. While there are some big changes happening statewide, there are also some changes and adjustments happening at our very own school. Have you heard about some of the new policies, Mia? Yeah, isn't there a new food and drink rule being placed at our school? Yeah, there is. Aaron has all the facts to educate us about it. All right, dogs. Some new rules have been set, and we need to follow them to make sure our school stays clean. First of all, a new policy called the designated eating areas has been set. All students are only allowed to eat in the cafeteria, North Commons, Skybridge, and the snack bar areas. Staff asks that we please follow these rules. Another thing that has come into effect is the water policy. During class, the only drink allowed is water. Keep in mind, it has to be in a clear container or else it must be kept away. Since this is such a big change, we asked the student body how they felt. Kind of a bummer, but I guess it is what it is. 
I believe that water shouldn't be the only thing you're drinking in class. You know, some people need their morning coffee to be in a productive environment. Um, uh, I could understand why they don't want water there um, in the classrooms, but I mean, other than the spillage, I can't find another reason. While students have their opinions on the new policy, they also have some on why it was set. I mean, I don't think eating is as much of a problem as not cleaning up after yourself once you eat, so I think it was just students kind of violating the trust to be clean and it'll be fine without the privilege of eating in class. These rules are set to control our bad trash problem. Let's make it our resolution to keep Cruz's high grade. For Bulldog Broadcast, I'm Erin Galindo. Hopefully these new policies will help us clean up the school. Yeah, dogs, make it your New Year's resolution to keep our beautiful school clean. Once again, I'm Mia Tantodinati. And I'm Simon Miller. We hope you enjoy the new year, and we'll see you again next time.